Now we all know that that uh, May is the month where people are getting interviewed. They're graduating rather and they're being interviewed and they're looking for jobs. You know, yesterday's blog, I, as I was doing research on that blog, I found out that uh, college graduates are getting entry level jobs now. That's horrible to have spent four or five years of your life, six years of your life, and get a thirteen dollar an hour job. So. In my book, and, and you can get it on Amazon if you want, you can get a Kindle book. You don't even have to buy the book because, you know what, I am going to spend this time giving this information to people who really, really need it. So you should please pass this um, blog link on to people who need to know what to do so that they can get a job. So in, the, in uh, the first chapter, I talk about what are employers looking for. So I'm going to give you four, a few things. and that employers are looking for that you need to be aware of. First of all, they're looking for your level of emotional intelligence. Now, while you might not be familiar with that term emotional intelligence, although it's uh, being used a lot more these days, all that means is that an employer is going to ask you these kinds of questions. So tell me about a time when you, and they're basically looking for your level of emotional intelligence. They want to know if you are tapped in or connected to yourself, what your self-awareness level is, and all of the other components of emotional intelligence. They're also looking for knowledge-based skills. They want to know what do you know? What kind of skills do you have? What have you learned? What um, seminars have you attended? What college courses? And oftentimes, when you are just getting out of college and you've only maybe done an internship or you had a job at McDonald's but you haven't really worked in your field, you've got to find a way to let employers know what kind of skills you bring to the job. So I, I, I advise you that if you've taken any seminars, any courses, those all need to be placed in your on your um, resume and you also need to get linked in get LinkedIn. In fact, I'll try to remember to put a, a link down there so that you can join LinkedIn if you're not already. Because people want to know what you know. Remember that. They want to know uh, your formal education. They want to know seminars, webinars, teleseminars, books, audio programs. This is how you let your employer know that you're a lifelong learner, that you're constantly updating yourself and making sure that your skills are up to par. They also want to know what kind of portable skills do you have. Those are soft skills. They want to know uh, if you are a good communicator. They want to know what kind of problem solving skills do you have. Leadership skills, organizational skills, written and verbal skills, customer service skills, time management skills, project management skills, critical thinking skills. And if you are lacking in any of those areas, Paula, it is important for you to work on those things because when you go to that interview, you have to emphasize to that potential employer that you have your act together. Now remember that 20%, 20% of your technical skills matter. The other percentage, that 80% that makes up 100, those are your soft skills. So you've got to work on your written and, and um, oral communication skills, speaking well in front of other people, being able to deliver without nervousness or uh, uh, aggressiveness or passiveness. And I did a blog on that, so I, I'll try to put a link in here somewhere so that you can read that blog. But that's this is what employers are looking for. Stay tuned because tomorrow, we're going to talk about the two agendas that you need to be concerned about when it comes to interviewing for your job. So again, Paula, please remember to uh, pass this video on, this blog post on to people that are looking for jobs. And um, we have an employment gap, right? We need to close it. I personally think that uh, in, a, in an economy where you're going to be making $15 an hour when you ought to be making 30 or 40 or 50 dollars an hour based on the education and the time that you placed you put in i think it's a great idea to start your own business 
and uh, I, I decided to do that I went back to school late in life and I decided to start my own business because I'm worth more than $13 an hour I'm worth more than $25 an hour I'm just worth more and I figured I needed to take control of that so I, I enjoyed a, I joined a blogging network the empower network and you hear me talk about it all the time if while you're out there looking for a job and maybe you want one then that's fine and you want to supplement your income you want to find a way so that you can make what you're worth then I invite you to join the Empower Network join the Empower Network join my team and I'll help you as much as I possibly can our team will get you plugged in and help you to build your life and our, our, our motto is that we want to have a life and a lifestyle you know what I'm saying you don't want to work 40 hours 50 60 hours a week you're too tired to do anything and do that till you're 65 or 70 and by that time when you retire if the government is even still in existence what are you going to get from it very little probably and you're going to be too tired and too old to enjoy it so click that link down there join me in the empower network i'll see you tomorrow on tomorrow's blog as we talk about two agendas interview skills and how you can get hired now so this is dr a reminding you we all have gaps and we all need to close those gaps you have an awesome day